When I say the most frustrating questions beginners ask, I only mean frustrating in the sense of, I wish you'd asked them earlier. I can save you so much heartache by using my own experiences and mistakes to help and speed up your learning in running. Hopefully, we all want to be better runners and humans, so I've compiled the nine questions I get asked or I hear the most regularly, and I've come up with the answers that I think can help you most. Hey, look what I found out running with my UTMB training partners, Mikey and John. And the first, this is the first one, the first point I'm gonna make because it's probably the question that I get asked the most as a coach and as a person that runs and has been running like a little old vet like these two as well, is how fast should I be running my training runs? And I'll break it down nice and quickly for you. If it's an easy run, like we're doing now, forget pace. It shouldn't be based on a pace because everybody is completely individual. It should be based on things more like feel, like can I hold a full conversation? Obviously I'm talking to you on camera, so yeah, I'd say that checks that box. What about, does it feel like a six out of 10, maybe creeping into seven out of 10 by the end? Yeah, that's okay. I'd aim for five or six out of 10. And do you feel guilty? You know, do you think, oh, I should be running faster? If you'd be thinking that, you're probably in the right place. And also, could you every now and then breathe through your nose? I don't know if I could do that right now because I'm trying to talk to camera, but these are some things like checklists that you can do to make sure you're running easy and not running to a pace because I just think that's a dangerous game when you're trying to train your aerobic base. Come on, who's heard this one? Tell me in the comments if you have. Who's, who's even guilty of asking this one in the early days? It's the one that probably frustrates me the most because it's just due to fear, lack of knowledge, but it is, isn't running bad for my knees? I mean, that for me is a face palm moment because I would say the evidence is overwhelmingly in favor of running for strength in your muscles, for strength in your ligaments, for your long life and for your age. So actually, it's really detrimental to your knees more often than not when you don't run than when you do. The only time that this could potentially pose a problem with knees is if you have a really bad technique and you don't get it looked at, you don't try and change it. So you're running on a bad technique and that could potentially hurt your knees, but that's rare. And also that is in your power to change. You have to remember that. No one just has a bad technique that they can't change. No one just has bad knees. I don't buy it, I'm sorry. The evidence is clear when they've compared really long-term runners in old age to those that haven't run in old age and look at their knee health, their muscular health around the knees. It's very clear that those that have been running a long time have really much more muscle mass, muscle density, muscle strength around the knee. So you know what? No, running isn't bad for your knees. Not running is bad for your knees. One question that beginner runners quite often ask is, can I start with a marathon? Well, lots of people will decide without asking the question that they're gonna start with and enter a marathon. Is it possible? Yes. Is it a way to have a really long, beautiful, sustainable relationship with running? Possibly not. Starting with a marathon could be a way to put anyone off running. A marathon is brutal and the training is grueling and it can be really good to get some shorter distances, shorter races under your belt, so you really know the things that can go wrong, even in those shorter distances, and know that when you navigate them and succeed, how good it feels, and that's what motivates you to keep going. So if your aim is to become a runner and be a runner for a lifetime, don't start with a marathon. Start smaller and build up, and you'll be so glad you did when you do get there. Should I run more to get faster? You might be tempted to think that to improve, you just have to run some more. And as always, there is some truth in that, but it's also misleading. Because let's say you run once or even twice a week, then yeah, maybe another run or two, if introduced gradually, would be of benefit and help your running. But if you're at, say, three, four, or even five runs per week, then simply thinking you can have more runs or run for longer is not really doing the nuances of running any justice. You have to think quality over quantity. What can you change in those three, four, or five runs that could have a bigger impact? 
What about adding intensity if there is none? Or learn about tempo runs? Or even just add strength and conditioning or proper warm-up drills? It's more about how you use your time smartly so you don't overtrain and get injured or plateau. So you don't have to think in terms of volume. Think more about wisely using the sessions and the time that you do have and watch yourself get faster. How about this for a question I get asked a lot and it's, it's a derivation of, let's say, why can't I just run? As in, why do I have to do the strength and conditioning, the stretching, the everything around it? And the answer is quite simple. You can just run. That's up to you. So I know many people who have never invested a single moment in strength and conditioning or even stretching after a run. And you know what? Each to their own. What I will say as a caveat to that is you don't know what's going to happen into later life. You don't know if that is going to come back to bite you or not. The only thing I can say with conviction is that when I'm old, I want to be able to still move. I want to be able to have a really good quality of life. And I don't believe, for me, I can get there by just running. I need to do other movements around it, strength and conditioning. I need to stretch after my runs. I need to take care of myself. I'm investing in my physical pension just like I would do invest in my financial pension. That's how I see all of the other bits around running. So ask yourself this, do you want to give yourself the best chance of having a good quality of life when you're older? Then I think it's all of the other stuff around the running that does that for you. I saw someone write on Facebook the other day, we don't stop moving because we get old. We get old because we stop moving. Two questions that runners ask around the same theme are, why aren't I getting faster? And why aren't I as fast as insert name our friend famous runner youtuber whatever and the first part of that question why aren't i getting faster is usually because you're looking at it in too short of a time frame progress in running takes a long time it takes a lot of consistency and hard work ben didn't improve his 5k pb for about five or six years so sometimes people get frustrated or they're asking questions about why they're not getting faster but it's because they're looking at it just in a matter of weeks or months and progress and big improvements really take time the second part of the question why aren't i as fast as somebody else and it's frustrating for you if you are comparing and worrying about what other people are achieving because you've got to focus on you and your own journey Remember, there will always be people faster than you. So stop worrying about other people. It will take the joy out of running and it will take, it will dilute the successes and the progress you're making. Because if you're out there running, then you're lapping everybody else that's sitting on the sofa anyway. Here's another question. And again, this is always phrased in different ways, just subtle changes, but it's often, why do I have to have a day off? Or why do I have to have recovery weeks? I don't really understand how doing nothing is actually gonna make me fitter. And that's a two pronged answer. The first thing is it's not doing nothing. It's just reduced volume. It's bringing it down a notch so that your body can take what you've done to it in the last three weeks and then improve yourself it, it kind of gives you the time and the bandwidth body-wise to improve because if you keep on training all you're doing is you're stressing the body you're breaking it down you're breaking it down and you're never giving it that time to then rebuild stronger and it's the same theory with recovery days you need some days off built in within your week to make sure that you a get the quality in the sessions that you do and b that you're not absolutely flogging yourself to the point of overtraining or plateauing so if people ever ask me, do I need a day off? Do I need a recovery week? I will always say absolutely it is good habit to build that in so that you can build safely and also allow those adaptations to actually happen by having the recovery. The training is what breaks down the muscle tissue and everything. It's the recovery is what allows it to build up stronger. Why do I have to run slow? Ah, the brain trap. How on earth can running slowly make you run fast? It just feels wrong. Hard work is what makes the improvements, not running easy. And this attitude is what 98% of runners come into running with. But let me spell it out as simply as I can. When we run slowly, we allow our body to focus on making improvements to our aerobic energy system. 
That's our body's ability to use the oxygen that we breathe in. If we stay running easy, it just gets on with these juicy beneficial changes, no stress building a bigger aerobic base. Run harder and suddenly the body is not only trying to improve our aerobic base, but it's also trying to process the lactate our muscles are accumulating as a result of running a bit harder. It's like it's being pulled in different directions and not really making progress on improving one thing or the other. Our base is the foundation to our house. It's the bottom of our pyramid we want to build. Without it, the rest is gonna struggle. And it's the hardest sell in training, which is trust the process. But if you do, if you keep those easy runs easy and work hard on the hard runs, you're gonna see results. And you'll never go back to that original way of thinking. You can't fire a cannon out of a canoe. And really, you shouldn't want to. Run slow and watch the progress. What shoes should I buy? There's one I get asked a lot. And my answer is always, I don't know. And I don't mean that to sound flippant, but honestly, I know very little about shoes. If you look, I'm wearing vapor flies and I know that they're yellow and bouncy. Um, maybe they've got a couple of flush growlings in there and a copper flange pipe, I'm not sure, but I'm not the person to ask about buying shoes, but if you want to know really the in-detail stuff, 40 runs, Bod Runner, Ed Bud, Seth Demore, these are the type of people you need to go and watch on YouTube. But I also have another reason for not recommending shoes to you. So at my last count, I think there was probably about 1 billion different pairs of shoes available from different manufacturers. I mean, it's that ridiculous. There are all colors for all types of runners, for all blah, 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 blah. And to be honest with you, no shoe company is gonna make a shoe that is rubbish for runners intentionally. So I would say you can't go wrong, really, for the most part with getting a pair of trainers and getting out there if you're a beginner. Don't overthink it, don't worry about it. Just do it. That is not, I should not use that word. Uh, just get out there. Because honestly, as long as they're not those black PE plimsolls that you used to wear if you're as old as I am, as long as they're not those, you're going to be all right. And then over time, when you learn a bit more about running, when you learn a bit more about how you run, you can maybe research the right shoes specifically for you or for a particular session. So I might use a different pair of trainers on a long run to if I was doing a tempo run to if I was doing an interval session. But that's just me and I'm way down the line. So get some shoes, get out, get some really colourful ones. That's, yeah, that's my tip. Get really nice colourful ones and enjoy. As always with these videos, I try and find an angle that can help you and I hope it has helped you. If it has, then consider subscribing to the channel, but no hard sell. Oh, hear that thunder. But also, I'm going to point you in the direction of this video, which is the nine unexpected consequences of being a runner. And I think some might shock you. Or oh, here's another video that... I'm gonna choose at a later date, so I'm not even gonna name it. Something that I think might help you anyway. Thanks for watching. Keep getting out there and running, and let me know in the comments if it helped you in some way. See you Sunday.